Yo guys, what's up? Tom here. Uh, finally getting around to doing the video on uh, upgrading the suspension on my Max. So I mentioned in my previous video that I'm going to be trying out some longer shocks off of the sledge. The rear shocks on the sledge are longer. They're the same shocks, the GT Max shock from Traxxas. Um, I think the front sledge shocks are pretty much identical to all four of the Max shocks, being that uh, the Max uses the same shocks front and rear. So I'm going to be trying the longer rear sled shocks on the Max. My original plan was to do all four sled shocks and kind of give it uh, just a, a bit of a boost up on all four corners. Right now though, I just have the rear um, done. I did run into an issue just finding the, the red shock bodies um, local. So I have to um, order those at some point. But for now, I just did the rear I can. <clears throat> just steal the, the rear shocks off of my sledge if I want and, and throw them on the front. It's not that easy. You actually have to swap out the shock caps and they will fit uh, directly on. Um, but you have to reuse your original Max uh, shock caps to fit uh, these shocks onto the Max. The, the sledge uses a different um, type of standoff for the top shock mount and it's not the same. So you can't just fit the sledge caps directly onto the Max. You have to reuse the, the stock Max caps, either the plastic or aluminum, whichever ones you have. Um, I happen to have the aluminum ones on here and I'll show you guys uh, what I got going on here. But so basically right now, I just have this, the longer sledge shocks mounted on the back and I have the stock ones mounted on the front. I want to test it like this just to see if it really is a big improvement and it's going to be definitely a, a bit cheaper to upgrade just the rear only. And part of the reason um, I'm doing this is because I tried, uh, just as an experiment, I tried running, I'll show you guys here, some longer, so these are the shock shafts that I was running before and they have some RPM longer rod ends uh, on the bottom. So it extends the shocks and it basically gives you a little bit more ride height on the rear of the vehicle. So just to prevent that kind of bottoming out situation that you get constantly with the Max. And it's one thing I really dislike about this truck. Overall, I love this truck, it's great, it's a lot of fun. But I hate the fact that over every little bump, even jumping off a curb, the rear just smacks the ground like way too easily. And part of the reason is, I guess all of the reason is, is that they use uh, an identical setup uh, from the front to the rear. And as far as, you know, the length of the arms, the, the shock mount position on the arm is in the same spot, front and rear. So they didn't really extend it out closer to the axle like they should have, like majority of other RC cars have. Uh, just to, to kind of offset the fact that the back of the car is heavier, right? So you go with a longer shock, you mount it closer to the axle, it has less leverage over the shock, and it stiffens up the rear, which is how it should be because the rear is heavier. And not only that, but when you run this, uh, especially on 4S, you know this thing likes to wheelie, all the weight transfers to the back of this truck, and it really makes the problem even worse. So you get all the weight on the back of the truck and it just wants to bottom out constantly. I'm not talking about like chassis slap where you come off a jump and it bottoms out. That's fine, I have no problem with that. Uh, there's no reason to try to tune that out of the RC. That's kind of what should happen. When the chassis hits the ground, it kind of displaces all of that force throughout the entire chassis and not just through your arms or your suspension components. So that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about just regular driving over any kind of rough, bumpy terrain, the rear end just constantly wants to slap the ground. And when it slaps the ground hard enough, it fucks it up in the air. So my goal is to add a little bit, uh, increase the suspension travel at the rear so that it sits a little bit higher off the ground and has just more suspension travel to absorb those bumps. And yes, this thing is a little bit creaky right now, but uh, cause it was really dusty last time I was running it. But, um, so anyway, I'm gonna run through what I did and I'll show you guys and I'll get you guys uh, some good um, running video uh, when I replace this ESC. Cause of course today at lunchtime, I went out to run it real quick. I was like, oh, let me get some good uh, running video and footage just to make sure that I'm happy with the setup before I make the video. And literally about 90 seconds into the run, uh, my ESC just completely crapped out. Red lights are all flashing. So it's, it's a goner, it's dead. 
I have a Spectrum ESC I think I'm gonna throw in for now. The short time I did run it, it was a noticeable improvement. So I have <clears throat> Sledge, uh, what you need to replace is, you can reuse a lot of the parts from your original Max shocks, but you need Sledge shock bodies, you need Sledge shock shafts, the internal shaft, and you need the Sledge springs, all from the rear of the Sledge. Don't make the mistake in order the fronts because they're the same length as the front shocks and the rear shocks on the Max, the stock ones. So you need all the, the components for the rear shocks. Like I said, you can reuse your Max caps, plastic or aluminum, doesn't matter. I'd recommend if you're gonna upgrade these, do it now, get the aluminum ones, they're gonna be a little stronger. Um, you can reuse your piston that's inside, the nut, the little washer that goes under the piston. You can reuse the entire lower seal assembly. You can reuse your bottom um, spring cup. The shafts do come with, um, the, the sled shafts do come with the, uh, the lower ends with the eyelets and everything, so you're covered with those. So yeah, here's the part number you need for the, uh, the shafts. These are the longer rears. Um, this is the part number for the uh, spring, the longer spring, which interestingly enough, I think, I think these would actually, if you don't run much preload at all, these would be a good addition for, even if you just want to keep the stock shocks. Uh, they're, they're pretty much just at the right length. Well, they are a little bit longer, so you're going to end up with preload, even with the preload thing wound completely out. But if you're looking to just run a stiffer spring, this is, this is probably a good option um, to uh, just run on the stock shock. And then the shock body that you need is this here, 9665. The R is just for red, that's the color I got, but that's the shock body. So basically you need three parts and one bag comes with both shock bodies. The other bag comes with both shock shafts. The other bag comes with both shock springs. So if all you're gonna do is the rear, just order one of, one of each of these parts, right? And then um, I'm not gonna go into showing you guys how to rebuild these. It's essentially the same as redoing the stock shock. There's a lot of videos online about these already. But like I said, essentially you're just installing, you're just kind of disassembling everything and you're reassembling it using the longer shock body, the longer shock shaft and the longer spring. You could even put the same fluid back in. You are gonna need a little bit more because there's more volume in these longer shock bodies. Um, you could add whatever weight you want. Um, I would maybe even start out with close to stock, 40, I think 40 is stock in the back. Maybe go up to 50 or 60, depending on what you're doing, if you have any different pistons that you're running. I did assemble these with the M2C pistons because that's what I had, uh, and that's what I have mounted up front too. Um, I'll show you my front setup, <clears throat> just for the heck of it. I am running the VG springs. These are the progressive rate springs. I am running the M2C um, shock pistons, and I believe I went up to 40 weight in the front. On the rear, <clears throat> I actually had mixed a little bit of oil, so I don't know exactly what it is, but it's at least, um, I'm gonna say it's like 45 or 50 weight in the rear. And <clears throat> essentially, let me just give you a couple measurements here so you know exactly what I'm talking about. I have them written down here. So the stock shock, from eye to eye here, right? If you measure from that screw down to that screw at the bottom, fully extended stock, you're looking at uh, 128 millimeters, right? I might be off a millimeter, so don't quote me on that. Yours are slightly different. It could even be if, if the lower right end's not screwed on the exact same amount, you may end up with a millimeter difference, but give or take a millimeter, it's about 128 millimeters um, from, eye, from eye to eye there. So, when I was running the um, the longer Traxxas rod end, that measurement went up to 135. So I picked up about seven millimeters of length, right? <clears throat> now, what that does, when you add seven millimeters of length to the shock, it equates to more at the axle because this being a lever, you're getting more travel at the end of this than you are in the center of this. So when you get about, you know, if you add about seven millimeters of travel, um, to your shock, you're going to get, I don't know if it equates to maybe close to double, I didn't take an exact measurement, but you're definitely getting more travel um, at the end there. So now when you go, so it's 128 for the, for the stock, 135 when you use the, the RPM rod end, and um, the sled shock stock, if you have them, you know, as they come, if you just build them up out of the, uh, the package, you're gonna end up with 
144 millimeters. Now, I said stock because I had to put a uh, travel limiter in mine. I had, to, I had to bring that down a little bit, and I'm gonna show you, I'll show you a picture of what I did, and uh, I'll explain to you exactly what I did. Because what ends up happening is when it's extended, if you just take the sledge rear shock and slap it on here, for one thing, you almost have to compress it a tiny bit. It's even too long to really fit in there. So that's not ideal, right? But what happens is it, it allows this to droop down so far that I was getting some binding with my dog bone here. And these are the metal axles in here. So I don't know if it's different. I don't know if you get a little bit more flex out of the plastic ones, but either way, I don't think I would really push it because you're gonna end up with a lot of wear and tear on these if they droop down too much. So what I did, I took a little piece of um, tubing here and I just simply cut an eight millimeter piece and I put it underneath the shock piston. So when I assembled it, you know, I put the shaft up through the shock body and then, uh, or up through the lower um, seal head down here. And then I slid on this little piece of eight millimeter piece of tubing. And then I put the little washer and then I put the, uh, the piston and then the nut on top of that. So what happens is that little space or that little piece of tubing limits how far down the shaft can travel because it's just acting as a little spacer inside. So um, it's pretty simple. Eight millimeters seems to do the trick. And um, what I end up with is, let me do a quick measurement because I didn't write this down, but I end up with about, right about 140. No, actually more like 139. So 139 length is about right at the limit where you're not gonna really get any binding with these axles. So I still need to test it and make sure it's not gonna be an issue. And I'm gonna do that before I actually publish this video. So you'll know if there's any issues, I'll cut this and redo this and put a bigger spacer in there, but don't just slap them on and assume that everything's gonna be fine. I think if they droop down too much, you're gonna end up with some issues. So definitely put, the, um, put some type of a spacer in there. You could even use like a little plastic spacer if you want. Um, I like the tubing because it does have a little bit of give. If something were to kind of smack this, it um, has a tiny little bit of a, kind of a cushion there. So as you can see, I mean, it's definitely, it's sitting a little higher in the back. And you know, I do have, I don't have my preload cranked down, so I don't want this thing to sit completely up in the air, fully extended like that, because that's not how suspension should work to begin with. And you're gonna end up raising the center of gravity. It's gonna be flipping over a lot. So ultimately this is still sitting. It is definitely sitting higher in the rear than it did um, initially. So my front is sitting at about 45 millimeters from the skid plate down and the rear is about 60. So, if I had this exact same setup as the front and the rear, they would both be sitting about the same height, right? So it always used to sit pretty level. So what you end up with is about a 15 millimeter increase in the rear. Now, of course, if you were to do the same setup in the front, you're gonna end up with 15 front and rear, and it is gonna sit up higher. And yes, maybe you're gonna have a little more, uh, it might be a little more prone to rolling over if you're super aggressive in the turns, but to me, that's going to be a trade-off for a suspension that actually functions much better, right? When you're going in a straight line fast over rough terrain, you're going to have that much more travel to really absorb those bumps. And from what I saw in a little bit of time that I ran it in front of my house, I know all the little lumps and bumps in my grass. I know there's some big roots that I catch all the time. And I know all the spots where this thing used to bottom out like crazy and drive me nuts. And it did not do that today. So it's a very good sign. Uh, it really handled well. Um, I also did just throw on these backflip LPs, which have helped make it sit a little bit higher compared to the stock ones. So that is also helping. And just to show you guys, I know a big concern um, a lot of guys have with doing anything like this uh, when you extend your shock or play around with the travel is making sure that you can still bottom out the chassis and have a tiny bit of upward movement because you don't really want to have it so far extended that you're just putting all that pressure onto the arms or the shocks or the, um, you know, the towers here. 
before the chassis hits because it's going to kind of smash into the you know bottom out the shocks and then all that stress goes all through the the suspension components rather than just have the chassis hit and disperse that that energy so as you can see i definitely still have um just the right amount and that's also not with the tires really compressed so and you add a little bit of flex to that so absolutely no problem with this um, this is going to be fine for landing off of big jumps it's not going to really overstress anything um so yeah that's about it guys so um Hopefully this will work out, and if not, I'm gonna kind of uh, amend this video a little bit, and I'll edit some parts out and, and see what uh, see what needs to be changed. But ultimately, I think it's gonna be fine. I don't have even when it's fully extended, I don't have any binding going on with my rear shafts. So my biggest question that I still want to figure out is, do I want to do this in the front? That's why I want to really get this thing out and give it a good test because I think this here might be the best setup because my only complaint was really with the rear suspension. The front always seemed to work well, especially I got the VG springs in the front. I think it's like a nice, um, you know, kind of supple initially, but then it stiffens up a little bit. And I, I really think the front suspension is working well. I don't think I have to change it. I just didn't want the truck to seem like uh, um, kind of imbalanced, right? But, you know, if I kind of press down in the center of the chassis here, it really does seem like it's compressing and rebounding at a pretty equal rate. So I think this is gonna be a pretty good setup and I may not need to do anything with the front. So if that's the case, it's gonna be great because it's definitely a cheaper modification. Um, Cause then all you need to buy is one package of each. And I forget, I think I paid, I think it was like 112 or 120 bucks to do. Um, but I, I, like I said, I bought, two packages of everything except for the shock bodies um, because they didn't have the other red ones in stock. But um, yeah, so my recommendation would be to, uh, if you want to try this, just try it in the rear first and see. So that's what I'm going to do. Uh, anyway, guys, I'm going to get this ESC swapped out so I can get this thing out and give it a run and hopefully get some, uh, some good video for you guys to show you this and um yeah I'll, I'll get a couple of um close-ups here of the shocks but in fact you can just see right there it really doesn't look any different i mounted them in the outer holes because uh for two reasons for one thing because they are longer you want to put them on the outside so it has a little bit extra reach but also because it's going to um just like stiffen up the rear a little bit too you know in my opinion these shocks in the rear should actually mount like way out here and that would solve a lot of the problem. It would be great. In fact, maybe what I'm gonna try to do in the future is, is rig up like a, some kind of little bracket that I can bolt in, be, in where the uh, stock shock mounts down here and actually has an extended mount that mounts the, the shock body, the shock rod end way out here. And I think that would be a cool solution because then I could extend these fully and use the full travel of the sled shocks and have them mounted out there. So it's an idea. I don't know. I'll have to kind of um, toy around with that and see what I can come up with. But, um, you know, it's something I've been thinking about. It might be cool, but I really have um, some high hopes with this setup here. So, um, yeah, that's it, guys. Any questions, comments, uh, anything else you... Um, want to discuss just uh hit me up in the comments below if you like this video and you want to see uh updates future updates i got a lot of other rc stuff going on a lot of other projects i have planned a lot of great videos i have planned um if you want to see them <clears throat> subscribe hit the notification hit the like let me know you guys are out there and enjoying these videos and that's that so stay tuned i'm gonna slow uh, i'm gonna throw in a couple of um uh, a little bit of a running video real quick. I'm not going to do a lot. This is a long, long, long video already. So um, check back because if this thing is dialed in and I get it running good, I'm definitely going to go out and do a lot more. I'll do like a solid video of just um, running this thing and, and kind of giving my thoughts on the overall performance. And maybe if I want to, to uh, change a couple things in the tune and the setup, um, maybe I'll go over that. So stay tuned for that video. And uh, thanks, guys. I'll catch you in the next video. Later. Thank <laughs> you.